Here. Scott. Here. Waters. Here. <clears throat> Moore. Here. O'Kane. Here. Shaner. Here. Please stand for a moment of silent prayer, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance, please. And to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Today we'll go to the consent agenda. There's no proclamations or anything. On the consent agenda, it's items 2 through 10C, consider them passed unanimously by the council. Unless a separate roll call vote is requested. If you want to speak on an item, please come up as I read that agenda. If you want to speak on an item not under the agenda, please come up under citizen concerns. Remember to always state your name and address for the record. I'll move the consent agenda. Second. Two is a reading of the City Council min minutes of March 21st and 22nd. Three are actions relating to grants. A is a resolution accepting a state housing trust fund agreement with Iowa Finance Authority. B is a resolution authorizing submission of an airport improvement grant application to FAA for one new snow removal equipment carrier vehicle and a rotary plow. C is a resolution approving the submission of a grant application to IDOT RISE program for the construction of Alicia Avenue in the Southbridge Business Park Cold Link Logistics Project. Four is an actions adopting construction documents. A is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the Sioux Gateway Airport Roof Replacement Project, Phase 1. B is a resolution adopting plans and specs for the 6th Street Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project. C is a resolution ad adopting plans and specs for the 9th and Ruston Intersection Water Main Replacement Project. Five are actions relating to agreements and contracts. A is a resolution approving a pipeline license agreement with B NSF for the sanitary sewer main crossing for the 6th Street Sanitary Sewer Replacement Project. B is a resolution approving amendment number two to the consulting services agreement with DGR for the Leach and Ingleside Avenue reconstruction projects. C is a resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Lines and Stripes for the 2022, 23, and 24 fire hydrant painting project. I have a question on that one. <clears throat> Um, one thing that's continuously come up is what kind of paint are we using? And I see any reference to um, any consideration of that? Uh, Spirit of the Hulis, uh, purchasing manager. I have a spec facilities. I don't. He did come up with specs. Um, I have to have him contact you on that. As okay. Far as what kind it is. Thank you. I'd appreciate it. Six are actions relating to personnel. A is a resolution amending the personnel classification by adopting an updated job description for the position of code enforcement officer and firefighter. B is a resolution amending position classification manual by adopting updated job descriptions for the position in the wastewater treatment laboratory supervisor and wastewater treatment maintenance supervisor. Error in the heading, Amber will explain. Thank you. There was a, an error in the classification code for the laboratory supervisor. The original re resolution that was published stated that the class code was I-4-6506. That Roman numeral 4 should be removed and has had been removed in the resolution and to be executed by the mayor tonight. That was a scrivener's error. Seven are authorizing payments. A is a resolution accepting the work and authorizing payment to J.R. Roofing for a portion of the City Facilities Roof Replacement Project, B or motion approving total payments issued for the reporting period February of 2022. C is Knife River. One is a resolution accepting the work and authorizing final payment to Knife River for the taxi way C South reconstruction project at the airport. Two is a resolution approving change order number nine, accepting the work and authorizing final payment to Knife River for runway 17-35 reconstruction and shift project phase one, schedule A and B construction at the airport. Three is a resolution accepting and authorizing final payment to Knife River for the runway 1735 reconstruction and shift project phase two, schedule C construction at the at the airport. Eight are actions relating to property. A is a resolution approving the final plat of the residents at Elk Point, third filing, petitioner Elk Creek development. I have a question on that one too. Um, 
I wasn't here for the first two, uh, but under my understanding, it was for 81 lots, 143 residential units, and unless I'm missing something, there's only 62 lots up to this point that are approved, and I'm wondering if that is a reduction in residential units as well. Jeff Hansen, Community Development Operations Manager. There's a fourth filing that's yet to come that will be fronting on Elk Creek Road, okay. which is uh, under design for pavement. Uh, that'll be coming forward yet this year. Uh, in regards to the number of units, 143 is still the same number that was used in the development agreement. Some of the lots that you reference um, are duplex and twin home, yep. so that makes a B is the resolution approving subdivision improvement installation agreement with Elk Creek Development in connection with the residents at Elk Creek. Third filing petitioners, Elk Creek Development. Nine are applications for <coughs> beer and liquor license. See the list, come forward if you have questions. Ten are boards and commissions and committee meeting minutes. See the list, come forward if you have questions. Anyone to be heard on any of those? Seeing none, we'll vote. Here, I'm going to abstain on the uh, <coughs> Palmer Candy Company. Class B, two B. Because you just eat so much of their candy, but they have so much of their candy. Yeah. He's biased. Oh. Exactly. <laughs> Likes him. Understand, buddy. They start with ice cream now or something. Passes five zero. Uh, 11's ordinance dedicating and naming three unnamed rights of way adjacent to Glen Avenue and South Helen as Glen Avenue. The petition with the city of Sioux City PNZ recommends approval. First consideration approved March 21st. I'll move second reading. Second. Passes five zero. Is anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? No. no. I'll move that. Second. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. Okay. Aye. Shainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. I'll move third reading. I didn't know if you were on it, buddy. Passes 5012 is an ordinance dedicating and naming an unnamed right of way adjacent to 2915 Glen Avenue at South Dallas Street. The petitioners, the city of Sioux City, PNZ recommends approval. First consideration passed March 21st. I'll move second. Second. Passes 5-0. Anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? No. I'll move that. Second. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Move third. Second. Passes 5-0, ordinance of rezoning 3650 Correctionville Road from zone classification AG to RR and SR petitioner Douglas Van, Doug Van Thurup, PNZ recommends approval. First consideration approved March 7th, deferred from the March 14th and 21st meeting. I'll move to delete. Second. O'Kane? Aye. Shainer? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. Come speak on him. I've just got a brief statement. Uh, Steve Archer, 4101 Green Avenue. At the first council meeting regarding this project, no one on Green Avenue or Correctionville Road expressed any objections to Mr. Moose's project. The concern was controlling the water runoff that was sure to happen. After watching the previous council meeting, it is clear that this is a trying time for all involved. I am not here to add insult to injury. All I would like is a little reassurance 
that however the zoning process goes is that the runoff issue is still a concern. Whether it is rural residential or residential makes no difference, but I believe that allows for some oversight by the city. If it were to remain zoned as is, I don't think that would be the case. A 12 acre can of worms has been opened up under the current zoning with relatively little ability of oversight. It's clear Mr. Moves has considerable time, effort, and money invested, and I am sympathetic to that. We on Green Avenue do as well. I'm just here trying to preserve that. Please weigh in the fact that the can of worms that has already been open is pointed directly at Green Avenue. Thank you for your time. Actually, can you say your, did he say his name and address? Yeah. Okay, I didn't catch that, sorry. Thank you. <clears throat> so, I just wanna be clear on something, if I may. Yes, sir. And I'm probably repeating what you just said, but so you're saying the drainage issue is still an issue that needs to be. Oh, dealt absolutely. With. I just want to make sure I'm understanding. Absolutely. What yeah. you're saying. Uh, what used to be static ground, trees, grass. Right. That would have caught uh, runoff. A lot of it. Never had an issue until all this transpired. Now it is completely different. 12 acres of land is opened up, graded, and it all runs straight to Correctionville Road and Green Avenue. I, that, that's my only concern. Like I said, I'm not here to add insult to injury. Right. I understand You're just that worried the project about your property. is going by the wayside, but things have clearly changed. So I just okay. wanted to get Thank it on record. Thank you. Thank you. Jeff, did you have anything to add to that? Sure. Jeff Hansen, Community Development Operations Manager. As a result of the petitioner's request to delete this item, uh, we have begun the review process for a single family house at this location that would not require any public infrastructure as the subdivision had previously shown. Uh, our first review of that site plan was completed last week at design review committee. Uh, comments were submitted at that time and I know additional comments are pending and being provided to the applicant, but clearly stormwater runoff and prevention will be one of those comments. Uh, Roger, uh, our environmental services, um, Employee has been out to the site numerous times and has uh, suggested improvements to the petitioner, Sam Moose, and some of those have already been made, but I know additional improvements um, will be requested as the building permit is applied for. Okay, thank you, Jeff. Yep. And I, I would just repeat that I, I think, um, at least in our engineering team meeting, they shared some of those same concerns and said that that's why they're not willing to open up that culvert at this point in time because all of that water would just run down onto your property. Um, so I don't wanna, I'm not putting words in Dave or Gordon's mouth, but I think that it would be important to them as well that those things that Jeff is identifying are in place prior to removing those impediments so that it doesn't just flow onto your property. Right, right. So. Typically stormwater, um, pond is not required for a single family infill home. In this case, it will be required because of the amount of square footage of hard surface, not with just the driveway, because it's quite lengthy, but also the, the size of the home and the size of the accessory building that they intend to build on this site, it will trigger the requirement for stormwater pond. What would the zoning be? Uh, the zoning is currently ag and it would remain ag. Just because it's one single family dwelling? Ag requires uh, 20 acres or more and he clearly has that on this site. It's close to 150 acres. Jeff, do you think that um, in light of the shortage of housing that we have in this community, do you think we'll see this item come back in the next, within the next 12 months or so? I think the petitioner and the landowner have looked at other options um, that may involve some additional lots fronting off of Correctionville Road uh, that would not require any new public infrastructure. Um, clearly, we won't get to uh, any large lot numbers. I don't see any high density occurring on this site just because the lack of sanitary sewer as well as the topography issue <coughs> here. Uh, I think there is an opportunity to get a few more lots out of this area. Okay, thank you. 14, I'll move to delete because we deleted 16 or 13. So. Set. Sorry, I didn't hear the second. Yeah. O'Kane? Aye. Jayner? Aye. Scott? 
Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye. 15 is a hearing and, resol hearing and <clears throat> resolution approving a proposal to sell property and authorize the city deed a portion of the vacated north south alley abutting west first and south center the street. The petitioner is Los Altos Rentals. I'll move that. Second. Anyone to be heard? The public hearing is now open. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5 0 a hearing and resolution approving plans and specs for the 38th Street Booster Station Improvements Project. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5017 is a hearing and resolution approving plans and specs for the 2021 20, annual sidewalk program project downtown. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. <clears throat> Passes 5018 is a hearing and resolution approving plans and specs for the FY 2022 fiber optic project. Anyone to be heard? The hearing's open. Seeing none, the hearing is closed. That was a motion. No, I'll second. Oh, I need to move it. Just, no, now the hearing's open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5019 is a hearing and resolution assessing a civil penalty against Bailey's convenience. 1000 Morningside, Iowa, I, Morningside Avenue for violation of the Iowa cigarette laws. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 50. 20 is a hearing and resolution assessing a civil penalty against V Vape 3407 Singing Hills Boulevard for violation of the Iowa cigarette laws. I'll move that. Second. Hearing's now open. Anyone to be heard? Seeing none, the hearing is closed. Passes 5021 is an ordinance. That Amending Chapter 8.08 entitled Disorderly Conduct of the Municipal Code to update the chapter to comply with changes in state law. First consideration approved March 21st. I'll move second reading. Second. Passes 5-0. Anybody opposed to waiving the statutory rule? Nope. Move that. Second. Shaner? Aye. Scott? Aye. Waters? Aye. Moore? Aye. O'Kane? Aye. Second and third. Second. Or third, I guess. Second. Passes 5022 is resolution awarding a service provider agreement to Norad Americas for activated carbon change out services at the renewal renewal fuels building located at the wastewater treatment plant deferred from March 21st. I'll move that. Second. Is there any discussion on the deferral or what? what? Oh, they have. Did they just? Oh, so everything's in order then. Okay, thank you. Uh, 
0.50. That concludes the, the agenda portion. Are there any citizen concerns? Good afternoon. I sent an email to you guys on Sunday night last week. And, and I, I have you state your name and address for the record, please. Paul Koskovich with JLAN, 2106 3rd Street here Thank in you. Sioux City. I have not heard back from any folks regarding it, so I'm here to address it. Why are we not awarding low bid approved vendor for a project? Not only low bid, but substantially low bid. Nowhere in the bid documents does it say that we are going to give preferred treatment to a vendor that provides both services at said property. I do know about this. So I would like to know why my low bid is not being accepted. I could address this. This is relation to spraying and mowing. Um, in this case, uh, JLAN bid only on the spraying at the actual wastewater treatment plant, chose not to bid on uh, any of the lift stations and uh, in the determination of purchasing, and then I supported that decision. Uh, the wastewater treatment plan wanted to award the spraying to one to one bidder. Uh, so in this case, he bid he did bid wastewater treatment plant, but he didn't bid any of the lift stations, um, and therefore we decided to package it as one spraying contract. And that was advised, or at least recommended, or desired by the wastewater treatment staff. So they're working with one for all of the facilities rather than just the main center. In another case, he pointed out where there was a separate bidding and mowing. Uh, the water plant originally wanted to award it just to one vendor who would do both, but there was such a large discrepancy in uh, what he bid versus what other bid that we did separate the spraying and mowing into a spraying contract and a mowing contract. Does anyone here see that it's an issue that we're choosing a company to do one to save or to spend, they're gonna spend an additional, I think it was six or $800, 40% more, because they wanna use one person. I mean, we bid out stuff every day where a utility contractor will do the paving, but he won't do the underground work. We do this all the time. I mean, how does this not the same, same opportunity here? In addition, nowhere in the paperwork does it say I have to bid both items. Nowhere in the bidding documents does it say that we are gonna to award to only one company that does both duties. Nowhere does it say we're going to give preferred treatment for that. So the clarity in the documents is just not there. I'm approved. I won several properties beyond this one. I should be awarded this one. It doesn't make any sense for this city to, sp to spend an additional 40% because they want to make one less phone call and deal with just one company. I'm spraying the project one time throughout the season, once. Next month, we're supposed to be. I mean, the excuse is just silly. It is, Bob. I'm sorry, it is. I'm, I'm approved. I should be the winner. I mean, it's to the point, like, if this is the case, it's going to be go. I'm not going to bid any more projects for the city. Why? I'm wasting my time. What if the guy that runs the next place wants to use someone else? I mean, ultimately, it's that person who works there and runs that plant that decides, rather than low bid. That doesn't make any sense. So you, you, so you did bid, and I apologize, Paul. I, I've been out of town, sure. and so I'm catching up on it, and I haven't reviewed all of the backup materials that you're talking about, but you bid for spraying on, what, one location, basically? <clears throat> Just kind of help me out. under. So the, so this... no, he, he bid at multiple locations and was awarded at some of the locations. This is the wastewater treatment plant where, in the discretion of the wastewater treatment plant, they didn't want multiple vendors uh, getting the spray contract. They wanted to award it to one contract. He, he bid on just the main plant. He didn't bid on any of the lift stations. But it's only a once, one spray a year for just for weeds and that's it? That's correct. I don't know about the lift stations if they're a single spray. I don't, I don't have that. But for this, for the wastewater treatment plant, it's just one, one treatment. You know, or in the paperwork, does it say that you are required to bid the lift stations and the wastewater treatment plant to be eligible? The reason I didn't bid the uh, other stops is because looking at prior numbers and the way people bid it, there's no money in it. These guys are going out to these locations literally for $20. $20. Okay. 
Uh, okay. Just so well, they can beat the other person? I guess. I mean, or they like to work for free. I mean, you guys know you can't drive across town for $20 and make a nickel. Yeah. What I, what I want to be careful of, Paul, and, and again, I apologize for not getting back to you with my comments, but what I want to be careful of is that this is under citizen concern. So I think at least what my thinking is, is that we need to look at that. And if it needs to be on the, an agenda item so we can have discussion, we can do that. But I don't know if that's, I don't know where we are in that process. I will say that contracts have been awarded. Past that, probably. Have contracts in the city ever been rescinded? Not very often. I don't, Amber, do you, I uh, you, you probably. I will tell you guys that I uh, brought this to the attention two weeks ago to the mayor and the city manager. I didn't hear back. That, so is, that I, is incorrect. You and I had a phone call with Spiro Blahulis where we told you exactly what we were doing, and I believe that was two weeks ago. I didn't hear back on why I'm not correctly getting awarded this. We told you in our phone call how we were awarding it and why. Apologize. Right. Mm -hmm. But your question is on the procedure, and I'm hearing that we probably followed the procedure or the or the policy correctly. But you're frustrated by it because you're saying the documents you're saying the documents didn't read that way. No, Dan, they didn't follow it. I was low bid. Low bid wins, right? If he's you're, saying as he's as saying that low bidder, bid should always win no matter what. No, but if the documents had had specifically stated that you you have to do both, you have to do spraying and and mowing, it was or a, that there a, would be preference you know, or something. Yeah. And there was nothing in that, but I believe there was the standard language that the city reserves the right to select based on the best uh, interest of the city. And in this case, in, in <laughs> speaking with the wastewater treatment plant staff, they didn't want multiple contractors doing spraying. But spending $600 additional is in the best interest of the city? Well, we don't know that the other vendor would have honored the rest of the bid had we said we're only going to give you uh, the, the lift stations. We don't know that they would have. But in the past, the prior vendor that did the spraying only does spraying. They don't do mowing. So we do know that it is possible that the city will select vendors to do multiple options and yes, not do, do and not do we, both. We have done that, yes. Mm -hmm. So again, I'm just trying to wrap my brain around why we're spending an additional six hundred dollars to go with a different company. Well, Amber, and Amber, you probably have you probably have not looked at this closely. I mean, is this something we could just review after this meeting, review in the next week or so, to see? What we've already committed ourselves to next year's bid being very explicit in how and in why we could award contracts to multiple vendors. That it's not just an automatic low bid gets it. I'm guessing is without what you're saying is that you're changing. Yeah, as an example, like and likely next year we will we will not award we will not have the bid so that it appears that you could bid lift stations and not the main plant or vice versa. I guess I didn't realize, I mean, I don't care. I know that Paul wants a job, but I guess I thought it was like, you do at your house, you get five or six different sprays, and I could understand that to make sure that they actually got it done, but if it's just a week, I got a hard time myself. Understand that. But okay. Well, Dan, you can look into it with Amber and get us a little report. Because yeah, I'm just not up to speed on it, Paul, and I, again, I apologize. I don't mean to further frustrate you with the process, and I am concerned that I would want you to continue to bid on city contracts. I'm just being real candid with you and up front. I'd want you to continue, so I'd like to review it with the city attorney's office and see if there's anything we can do, and 
if we can't, I'd rather tell you we can't do anything this year, but try to answer some of your questions. Should bids go out? Like all the spring bids go out for all the different Yeah, it all went out at one time, yes. Okay. Okay, Dan, we'll get back to you. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else be heard? Matthew. Uh, Skywalk Art Show was a huge success. It was great. Um, the mural was beautiful. The artwork was beautiful. Um, spacing was great. Everything was nice and spaced out. There's plenty of room to move around. Um, this week, we've got a couple big things, Art Ceteras coming on Friday, uh, Breakfast with the Bunny at Combe Park on Saturday, um, and I don't know if everybody else is keeping up with planting at home, but I'm already potting up all of my plants at home under my lights and uh, banking my rain barrel water. I've got about 250 gallons saved up so far, so if you haven't hooked up your rain barrels yet, hook them up. Awesome. <laughs> Do you have I'll help you. No, I don't have. <laughs> he said no. <laughs> I don't have plants either, flowers. So, <laughs> go ahead. I'm, um, sure, I'm sure Paul won't spray my yard this year now. No, you're <laughs> out. I'd like to bring up the construction that's coming. We have a lot of construction happening. Everybody's wanting it but we have to deal with the inconvenience of it. Uh, we had a really great public hearing last week on the Stone Park Boulevard reconstruction. It's a lengthy process. There's always planned in some kind of stages to make it as convenient as possible while making it as affordable as possible. And the, the engineering department, as well as our uh, third party engineers reminded me and I think some citizens that the longer it gets drug out, the more stages and phases that it has, the more expensive it is. So they don't try to make it more inconvenient on purpose, but they do try to take in consideration, travel in and out of the neighborhoods and convenience, but they have to be mindful of how much these projects are costing by stretching them out a little bit further. So I think these public meetings that we have to talk about these big projects are really very, very um, useful. I really appreciate the ones that I can go to. I like to interact with um, the folks who live in the neighborhood. I had some really good visits that afternoon. Uh, we probably have, just in the next 30 days, seven, eight million dollars coming up. Is that about right, Dave? Of projects starting, so it's very exciting. We're kind of getting what we want, but we gotta go through the bumps to get there. So, cool. No pun intended. Yeah. Unintended. We want to get rid of the bumps. <laughs> the waters. Yeah, the only thing I was going to say was recap. Um, this last week wrapped up the 25th season for NAIA that we've had here um, at the Tyson Event Center. It's It's been a great ride. And I wanted to share, there was some figures shared on social media too about um, the NCAA D2 Women's Basketball Championship. Uh, their attendance to watch that game was about 637 individuals. The, um, the NCAA D3 Women's Basketball Championship was around 1,100. And at the Tyson Event Center, we had almost 3,000 individuals show up for the championship game. So if you didn't see um, any of the photos shared or anything, it was <clears throat> incredible attendance, especially for having, um, I know Dort is obviously close and they traveled really well. Uh, but then looking at Thomas More University from substantially farther away, um, still had a great showing. And so um, it was a great event, great to have it back in Sioux City. Look forward to the next time. Um, but just wanted to report on that, that the energy down there was pretty spectacular. So I'm glad and congratulations to Thomas More for, um, for winning. Their to add on to what you're saying, Alex, about the visitors, um, I was told, I think you were too at our last... Um, Sports Commission meeting that the CBB is going to have a some software that will do some calculations as to how many visitors we oh, get yeah. and what that does to our local economies. So soon we'll be able to kind of report some of that, what the impact of these events are having on our community. 
Yeah. Danny Gann didn't need a software. Yeah, I was going to say. Danny well, could do that. But yeah, no. that was it was pretty outdated, and yeah. so now I think oh, we no. have an updated software that will calculate take, yes, that for us. It's going to take a Another lot waste of money. Can do the number ahead of time. Down to mm -hmm. number of bottles of water purchased, et cetera. Okay. <laughs> no, it should be great. That's all I have. Mr. Moore, good to have you back. Well, thank you. Welcome it's really back. nice to be back. I try to mean as that. brief as you possibly can. I will. I only have one item. It's a big item. The Litter Dash 2022 is Friday, April 29th. I would like to form a team, so I might have to call on Roger to help me do that. It's a uh, it's exciting time. I, I've done it in the past, and and it's fun to have a team and work together and. I usually have done the Prairie Creek, um, the trail, I believe, but I think I'm going to get to some more visible areas if I can. But that's April 29th. Visible for people seeing you work, or right, visible for I, for seeing the garbage? Okay. I guess you see it on the trail. But April 18th is our deadline for forming the teams, and I know that's coming up pretty quick. So. I wish we could do litter dash once a month, but yeah. wear me out. So. Anyway, that's all I have, Mary. I move we adjourn. Down. Second. Shaner. Aye. Scott. Aye. Waters. Aye. Moore. Aye. O'Kane. Aye. I will create treasure, huh, baby?